Pedro sent me a question. Thanks Pedro for the question. Pedro asked, what is the purpose of the loopback interfaces? Now, if you do a search in Google, you'll find all kinds of answers, including that the loopback interface allows you to test connectivity to the 127.0.0.1 IP address. Now, that may be true on a PC, but on a Cisco device, a loopback interface has an entirely different meaning. In this topology, I've got three routers, router one, router two, and router three configured with these IP addresses. On router two, show IP interface brief shows us that the router has IP addresses configured on the gigabit interfaces. So gigabit 00, 01, and 02 have IP addresses. Now in this example, these are virtual routers, but if they were physical routers and a cable got disconnected or got cut or broken in some way, the interface would go down. The difference between a physical interface and a loopback interface is a loopback interface is a logical interface on a router. And you can create many of these. So notice as soon as I create that logical interface, the interfaces come up. I can then give that interface an IP address, such as this. Notice it's a slash 32 IP address. In other words, this is the only IP address on that interface. A loopback interface is a logical interface on a router that won't go down unless you manually shut the interface down. It typically only has one IP address, but you could configure multiple IP addresses on that interface if you wanted to. The first advantage of a loopback interface is the interface doesn't go down unless you explicitly shut it down. So it's not like there's a cable that can be unplugged and then the interface goes down. Now, why is that important? When you telnet to a router, so let's say I telnet from router one to router two, I could telnet to one of the gigabit interfaces on the router. So telnet 10.1.1.2. Notice I can log in. So I'm now connected to router two. I'll go back to router one and then I'll telnet to the second IP address, 10122. Now that's fine, but firstly, you need to remember which IP address is configured on which router. And secondly, if for some reason an interface went down, so let's say the cable was disconnected, rather than me shutting it down manually here, you would have a problem telnetting back to that IP address, 10112, because the interface has gone down. However, if you have the loopback IP address configured on the router and you advertise that loopback through a routing protocol such as OSPF, you can telnet to that loopback using this network or this network. So if one of the interfaces goes down, it's not a problem because you can still reach the loopback interface. So at the moment on router one, we can't ping the loopback of router two because it's not advertised in a routing protocol. So what I'll do here is enable EIGRP and I'll do something similar here. So enable EIGRP on all interfaces and let's do the same thing on router three. Now, once the neighbor relationships have been established, which they have done in this example, so show IP EIGRP neighbors, there's our neighbor relationship. Router one can ping the loopback of router two. So now I can telnet to the loopback of router two, even though the one interface is down. Notice gigabit zero zero is currently down. So by the same token, if we brought up that gigabit zero zero interface, but then shut, gigabit zero two, my telnet session still continues. So notice the telnet session stayed up. Now that won't always happen in the real world. It depends how long the connection takes to establish. But notice show IP interface brief, I'm still able to telnet to the loopback of router two from router one, 
because the telnet traffic is using the alternate route. So it doesn't matter if interfaces go down or come up. As long as I've got one route between router one and router two, I can connect to the loopback and manage the router through the loopback interface. It's also a lot easier if you use a separate subnet for your management network. In this example, I'm just gonna keep it simple and create loopbacks with IP addresses quadruple one, quadruple two, and quadruple three. So I'll simply create an IP address on router one with the loopback address. And I'll do the same on router three. On router one, show IP route. We have two routes to get to the loopback of router two and two routes to get to the loopback of router three. So ping quadruple three, telnet quadruple three. Telnet is not working, let's have a look. So show run pipe begin VTY. Notice I've got transport input none, line VTY 04, transport input, and I'll just say all. Telnet again, we can log into router three. So from a management point of view, it's a lot easier to use loopbacks. Now you might not wanna do it the way I've done it here in the real world. You might have a separate network that you use for management. So in this example, I'll just use a 192 network. And actually what I'll do is I'll create a separate loopback. So I'll put this back to quadruple two and create a additional loopback for 192.168.1.2. So I could do something like this to make it consistent. So use interface loopback 192. It's always good practice to keep it simple. So use the same loopback number. Don't do what I've done here. Try and keep them consistent. So let's change that. No interface loopback one, interface loopback 192. Notice, however, it's very easy to create loopback interfaces. Just create as many as you like. There are normally some kind of limitation on the router, but notice the numbers that we could use here. You could use really long numbers if you wanted to. But in this example, I'll just keep it simple and use 192. So show IP route. We've now learnt the routes of the loopbacks. And now all I need to remember is that when I tell net to router two, it's 192.168.1 dot and the router, which is dot two. When I want to tell net to router three, it's 192.168.1 dot router three. So tell net 192.168.1 dot three. And I can log in. So that's the first reason, Pedro, for using loopback interfaces. I'll cover another reason in a separate vlog.